and go. Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Rest of my Daisy. And we've got an example of what to me is a pretty quick turn uh, repair and, re and a resto mod. Uh, basically got a email from a customer who had a legacy Daisy that he and his brother enjoyed for years. Uh, of course, in the scheme of things, it was uh, put in the closet, forgotten, whatever. But eventually it did lose its original plastic stock, its original plastic forum. So it showed up here as just a receiver, but not actually in too bad a shape. Let's take a look at the roll stamp. This is a Red Rider. It is a number 111 Model 40, and it's a Plymouth, Michigan gun. Now, this is a post-war Red Rider 11140 because it has an aluminum lever and it also has the elevation adjustable rear sight. Now, the elevation screw was missing on this particular piece, but fortunately I had one in my vast stores of spare parts for messing with these guns all these years that I was able to replace that. Now, uh, basically the gun was in pretty good shape. It's got an original bottle cap. It was running uh, stock with a new spring at about, well not stock, but with a new spring it was running about 271 average, which isn't too shabby for an old gun like this. Uh, we've done some power plant swaps. We'll see how the customer actually wants it actually delivered. But at one point uh, we managed to get it up to an average speed of 314 with the standard power triad model 25 mag cobalt mainspring 764 overbore air tube. What I wanted to show you guys today, this stock set. I did not build this stock set, but I did refinish it. This is a Fred Harmon, period correct, uh, Red Rider buttstock for the 11140. Nice strong imprint. Let's uh, roll on down the forend. The forend's pretty good shape. It's not looking too shabby. Uh, let's flip her over and take a look at the uh, mother-in-law side. And you can see that, you know, the gun has had its issues over time. There's some dents in the wood here, but no major cracks and an overall good look. Now, what we did with uh, this particular gun stock was when I got it, it looked quite a bit like this gun stock. Now, this is another 11140 Fred Harmon gun stock, and it has the uh, original varnish and the original uh, stain that was put on by Daisy, but you'll notice that the varnish has gotten a crinkly appearance, and that's because it's aged and oxidized, and on the uh, mother-in-law side you'll see more wear. So when I get a stock like this, if it's like this, I usually leave it alone, but if it's one that looked like this with a broken wrist and a major crack running down the butt. What the hey, I'm gonna go ahead and refinish it. And this one, as you can see, had a rough life. It's been chewed up pretty well. But this particular stock set had not. It's still, uh, by the time I get done with them, I strip the varnish, uh, take it up to about 320 on sanding, then dye it, and then apply Danish oil to it and back sand. Uh, it's got a good slick feel, it's got a good tone to the wood, matches the uh, patina on this particular gun pretty well. I think it looks appropriate. Uh, let's roll down here to the muzzle and we'll take a look at see if we can get the color shift. Uh, that slightly plumish brownish look. Kind of hard to see under the uh, LED lights and the incandescence, but it has a, uh, a patina, as they call it. Now, uh, the guy over at Anvil, he was a hoot, he refers to patina as proof of poor maintenance <laughs> because it's just basically rust. But the gun's complete, the gun's running. Uh, we'll see what the customer wants to do in terms of power plant options. But it's awful nice to get one in and, uh, you know, be able to get one out without too much time going by. God knows that's not the case for me normally. Well, that's all we've got today for you, kids. This is Shane Bruce, Resto Mod Daisy, signing off.